What is up, comic fan? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and we're about to take a look at the new comic books releasing October 4th and 5th and find out what books made my pool list. But before we do that, check this out. <music> So for the past few weeks, it seems like we've been on a roll with awesome titles dropping, phenomenal stories, and it doesn't look like it's letting up for this coming week. So I've got about nine books to showcase that I'm super excited about, and we're going to kick it off, of course, with some DC love with Batman issue number 128. This is Chip Zdarsky's run, continuing the failsafe storyline with the robot that's unbeatable for some reason that apparently Batman himself created. And he doesn't remember doing it. So it's been interesting enough that last issue I got a little bit more excited because it dove into the history of the why it exists, calling back to an old famous DC comic story called The Tower of Babel. I thought that was a great uh, pull from DC history, as well as getting that guest appearance by Superman. It was really just kind of a tease because he's pretty much should be appearing in the first panel, first page of this one. I do have a fear that is the failsafe is just going to immediately pull out a kryptonite ring, making Superman's appearance pointless but we'll see how it goes i'm i'm looking forward to it nonetheless it's definitely not detective comics but it's still definitely delivering next up one i'm absolutely excited for dark crisis on infinite earths issue number five of seven so we are uh, on the back nine here and pariah has successfully brought back the infinite earths and we have the on the cover here it's featuring the original justice league that have been thought dead in their costumes that they wear in those one shots where they're in those imprisoned worlds so could we be seeing the return of the justice league in this we still have two of those one shots left to go so i'm curious how it will play out with the timeline or if this is actually going to be them returning in all of their glory and it says a league reborn right there on the cover so i'm thinking this might be the issue where our heroes return so what could it mean with them coming back what does it look like with them coming back and where do we go once they're back especially now that the infinite earths have been rebirthed i cannot wait to check it out and be sure to check out sector 2815's youtube channel where him and i do the dark crisis deep dive every week over there Next up, we have another one that I'm extremely excited for. This is Gotham City Year One, written by Tom King with art by Phil Hester. What this is, is taking place two generations before Bruce Wayne, back when Gotham was a shining beacon of Hope City and not the broken down, corrupt cesspool that it is known as today. And what this story is supposed to be spotlighting in this miniseries, I believe it's six issues, is Gotham's fall from grace, the events that actually led to the descent that finally birthed Batman himself. So we have the hard world detective Slam Bradley on the case of a kidnapping, which I can only compare to the Lindbergh baby, that really just set this city spiraling into madness. I think this is going to be great. Phil Hester on the art should be awesome. Tom King on the writing, it's guaranteed to be uh, eventful and memorable and very well done. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Next up, a crapper. And uh, you might be asking why I'm even spotlighting it, because I will not give up on my mean green fight machine the hulk we have issue nine so we're back to the normal if you want to call it normal we're back to just regular non-crossover hulk issue so this is donny kate's crap fest here and we just got done with the banner of war storyline with him versus thor and leaving that event if you miss that event you won't even know it because uh, everything's the exact same as before we started the event it was the most pointless thing i've ever seen in my life but now we're getting this new storyline like I said, right back where we were with the Hulk is a literal spaceship flying through space to be alone. And he's going to run into this broad here named Monolith. So we'll see what's up with that. What's that weird green thing with little arms on his head? Who, who knows? Who really cares is my point. Uh, I hope to God that we get an announcement any day now that we're about to get past this stupid era of Hulk. Hopefully, at least Donny Cates will get past the stupid Starship part and just start writing some decent Hulk stuff. I know the guy can write a good story. Like, he doesn't do it often, but I know he's capable of it. Those crossovers fire. Uh, God Country was good. Like, why, why can't this be decent? Uh, the most exciting thing that's happened so far in this series for me was that introduction of Titan. I know a lot of people didn't really care for it, but the concept of if Banner gets mad, he hulks out. What happens if Hulk hits an ultimate breaking point? And then we have this Titan personality. I'm more interested to dive into that. So hopefully we start revisiting some of that sooner than later. I am on all reality uh, interested to see where it's going to go from here. I just don't like the starship angle and the bad writing. 
Next up, we have new Fantastic Four. This is issue number five, and it is the finale to Peter David's retro series here. This has been really fun. They got the uh, old team back together of Joe Fixit, Spider-Man, Logan, and Ghost Rider. And they've been uh, battling it out with demonic entities in Las Vegas. And finally, the Fantastic Four proper showed up at the tail end of the last issue for the final battle against these dark demons. And we're supposed to be getting a surprise cameo in this issue as well. It's just fun comic book goodness. I uh, hope everybody uh, gives these, this title a shot or any of those retro titles that they've been doing. They have really, really been enjoyable. So I'm excited to see how this ends and if they'll be announcing another one soon. Next up, here we go. Here we go. Dark Crisis, the Deadly Green one-shot. So what this is, is the first outing of Swamp Thing after Rom V's incredible run that he did. It, that, that, I think it was 16 issues just wrapped up a few weeks back. And this will be the first time we see Swamp Thing post that run. So what this is, is a 48-page one-shot. And if you are familiar with this crisis event, you know that the Great Darkness is the entity that is really behind all of it that's fueling Pariah to go on this mission. So what this issue is supposed to be exploring is how and why the Great Darkness would even be motivated to work with Pariah and what is his endgame. And how does that tie into Swamp Thing? Well, if you go back to the Swamp Thing anniversary issue, that is where we first get introduced to the Great Darkness, where it was first brought into comics. And it was up to the Justice League Dark and their formation to actually try to stop it. And they couldn't stop it as much as just bargain with it to rest. So they're going back to Swamp Thing and John Kent is going and they're supposed to be merging in a sense to go confront the Great Darkness directly. I'm very excited about this. I cannot wait to see how this plays out. There are numerous huge creators on this, like Joshua Williams, um, God, what is his name? Dan Waters, as well as Ron B, all working on this title. I don't know if they'll be doing separate individual small stories inside this 48-page beast, or if they're all just co-writing together. I'd like to lean more toward the idea of the short individual stories. But needless to say, I'm excited for this and to see what happens with Swamp Thing moving past this. I hope to God Ron B stays on him and keeps him going. Next up, another one I'm super excited about. Junkyard Joe, issue number one. So I feel like this one's taking a while to get here. So not long ago, well, it was at this point, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank stepped into their own independent comic that they created together called Geiger, which was a blast. It was a mini series, super fun. And they had all these little uh, bonus pages. They were almost like advertisements for these unnamed, uh, unknown soldiers fighting in unnamed war. Unknown soldiers, unnamed war. Yes. And uh, it, it kind of talked about this vast universe of characters all throughout time that kind of just uh, went under the radar. One of those so, uh, people were Geiger, and that's more in the future. One of them is this character called Redcoat that was introduced in Geiger's 80-page annual. And Junkyard Joe is a character that we've been teased like he's a comic strip character that exists inside the Geiger world. That people literally pick up newspapers and read this comic strip of this character called Junkyard Joe. Little do they know... But we, the readers, have been let in on the secret. He actually existed in this universe. And this miniseries is going to be spotlighting that existence inside the Vietnam War. So I'm really excited about it. The same creative team is working on it, as well as an additional artist, I believe. So I think this is going to be really fun. They're building out this Geiger universe, which I've, I've enjoyed uh, so far. That 80-page giant introduced us to this character called Redcoat, which I'm very, very much looking forward to uh, his series. He's like an immortal warrior that... Uh, has been around since the Revolutionary War. So there's a lot of cool concepts we're playing with, and to get the second installment of that to expand the universe is definitely exciting. And the last book that I have on my guaranteed pool list, but there is one that I will mention after this that I'm on the fence about. But the final for sure one is Black Adam, The Justice Society Files, Dr. Fate. So this is the finale of the four one-shots that uh, lead into the Black Adam movie. And what this is is like the movie prequels and each issue has spotlighted a different Justice Society of America member that will all be in the movie. The Dr. Fate being the last one here. And these have been phenomenal in kind of laying out what this world looks like, what the state of this team looks like and their function inside of the team, as well as like time stamping a few things, introducing us to the uh, uh, the possible uh, villains in the movie, which is it's definitely going to be intergang at this point. We know that. Uh, from this and then if you read about the movie online you'll find out as well but to get dr fates i think they saved the best for last i think that he's kind of already starting to steal the show between adam smasher and dr fate man i'm i'm absolutely pumped but i've been getting the a coverage for this but i have been getting 
the B covers that have been the movie photo variants, which are just phenomenal. I love this cover, just like I love the rest. Uh, I like that he's holding the helmet. I would have loved to see him in the full, full costume like we get on the A cover. But I get you got Pierce Brosnan. You want to show him off. He looks esteemed old Kent Nelson there. Looks fantastic. But these have been great. I hope everybody's picking these up and just getting hype for this movie. October 21st. It's going to be insane. And then the last one, I didn't pull a picture for it, but Miracle Man, Alan Moore's Miracle Man is returning in some capacity this coming week with Miracle Man in the modern age, issue number zero. There's a large creative team on this that's including Neil Gaiman, who actually finished off Alan Moore's run. And they're supposed to be honoring that run, celebrating that run. It's an anniversary. I've heard from my friend Becker that they're going to go back and potentially finish the run because it kind of ended abruptly without getting a proper finish to it. But that one's kind of on my list. I might, I might not. I'm going to check with Pops on this one. I know Pops is uh, very well versed in Miracle Man and see if uh, he would be interested in me picking up to make sure that we finish out that run for the PC. But we'll see how it goes. Needless to say, I'm interested to see what you're excited about this coming week. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know. Also, I'd like to go ahead and uh, give a shout out to the channel sponsors. A big thank you to Big Time Collectibles for sponsoring the monthly Legion Loot giveaway. Be sure to check them out. And that giveaway will be happening tomorrow night. This video uh, releases everywhere on Saturday. So Sunday night, 9 p.m. at Weeks End. I've got that massive giveaway of the Big Time Collectibles books. That uh, artist cover that Austin LeMay did for Something is Killing the Children in a CGC 9.8 yellow label. As well as some art donated by Legal Burning on Instagram. Phenomenal artist who hand burns uh, his artwork with a wood burning tool. It's crazy awesome. And if you need anything cleaner pressed, hit up our good friend Justin on Instagram. Hit him with that promo code WEARLEGION. Take advantage of that special offer. His information is also in the description of all of my videos. Now if you want to know what my top pick for this week is going to be and why... Hit up the good friend, the comic vet. Every Sunday he posts uh, the video where him and I both give you our top pick going into the week blind. And you can come and hang out on Sunday nights and see if it holds up. So uh, uh, finally, huge shout out to the Augusta Book Exchange. My LCS, Paul and Don are fantastic. They're the keepers of my comics, the guardians of my pool box. They make sure everything I'm looking for is always waiting for me every week when I get there. So guys, again, I uh, appreciate you watching. Hit that thumbs up. Thank you if you made it this far. Consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.